Welcome to this GCSE physics video on background radiation. What we're going to be looking at today is actually measuring the background radiation in the room we're in using this Geiger Muller tube connected to this Geiger counter. So we're going to know what background radiation is and what the sources of that radiation are. If I turn this on and press start, we'll actually start to hear clicks of radiation being detected by this Geiger Muller tube and counted on this Geiger counter. So you can hear those clicks just now. That means there's radiation actually in this room. And it's because it's in the background, this is everywhere. So this is just being detected by this. There's radiation hitting you right now. There's radiation hitting my body all over. And we're going to be looking at what, what the sources of that radiation are. We're also going to be able to calculate something called the corrected count rate. Because if you've got a radioactive source, so for example, in this lesson we're actually going to be using Brazil nuts as a radioactive source. We want to know how radioactive they are. What we're going to need to do is take the count of radiation from these Brazil nuts, but then we're going to have to take away the background count, because that would be there no matter if they were here or not. You're still going to get a certain count of radiation. So we're going to be looking at calculating the corrected radiation count. Let's get some basics sorted first then. So what do we use to detect radiation? We're going to use a Geiger Muller tube. Here it says Geiger Muller probe and attached to a Geiger counter. Okay, so Geiger Muller tube attached to a Geiger counter. The next definition we need to review is the count rate. So that is the amount of radiation recorded by a detector in a given amount of time. So normally that would be the amount of radiation detected per minute. So we're going to run an experiment a bit later and we're going to run this for five minutes and see how much radiation we get. So we just divide our answer by five to get the radiation per minute, the count rate per minute. You need to know the definition of background radiation. Background radiation is radiation that's all around us all the time. That means that throughout human history, throughout our entire evolution, we've been exposed to ionizing radiation, which we know ionizing radiation has an impact. It can kill cells, cause mutations and cause cancers. Right, about 15% of that radiation though is artificial, so it's from man-made sources. The three main sources of man-made radiation are nuclear weapons testing, nuclear power stations and medical uses, so hospital, radiotherapy, and because x-rays are also ionising radiation, that will also count in there. So that's the majority actually medical uses on that artificial. So the other 85% then are made up of natural sources of radiation. One of those would be food and drink. So I've got here a set of different kinds of nuts that we could eat. Now Brazil nuts are actually one of the most radioactive materials you could eat, um, along with bananas, also radioactive. And a bit later on, we're going to be measuring how much radiation we get from inside those Brazil nuts. Other sources would be rocks under the ground. So granite is a particularly radioactive rock, and that gives rise to radon gas, um, which is in the air. It's because you can breathe that in, it's even more dangerous. So places where we've got a lot of um, granite rocks under the ground, like Cornwall, they actually have to open their windows every day to let this radon gas out. Otherwise their radiation dose would be even higher than it already is. Another natural source of radiation is cosmic rays. Now these rays come from out of space and we're quite well shielded by the atmosphere ordinarily so these rays don't often don't reach the ground that often um, or their intensity is very reduced but if you go in a plane and you go higher and higher up in the atmosphere and you spend maybe a lot of time so maybe you're an air steward air stewardess they've got a higher dose because they're higher up in the atmosphere there's less blocked uh, by the atmosphere and their radiation dose is higher in actual fact if you go completely out of the earth's atmosphere, so you're an astronaut, your dose would be really high. So part of the shielding on the space station and part of the role of the spacesuit, as well as keeping the astronaut warm, um, is actually blocking out the ionizing radiation from cosmic rays. So they're the key sources of background radiation you need to know, and you need to be able to split them into artificial or man-made. You need to know the SI unit for radiation dose. So the SI unit is the sievert, capital S, little v. Now sievert is actually quite a huge dose of radiation, so we actually measure it in millisieverts. So just like you've got millimetres, means a thousandth of a metre, a millisievert is a thousandth of a sievert. So 1,000 millisieverts is one sievert. 
In questions, you'll, you may get given a table of information with different doses, so that will quite often be written in millisieverts. We're now going to have a go at measuring the background radiation. So just getting our terminology straight, we've got a Geiger Muller tube attached to a Geiger counter to get the radiation dose. And we're going to get the count rate. We're going to try and work it out for one minute. We're going to set this up with the stopwatch, time it for five minutes, and that will give us the average count after five minutes. Let's see what it is in this room then. So when this read five minutes, the actual reading on the Geiger counter was 95. So that means we had 95 counts in five minutes. So that's the average reading. So I could do that a few more times and I'll find out it wasn't always 95, it might be 96 one time, 94 another time. So that's just the average count. Right, we've got that radiation dose sorted. What I want to have a look at now is the radiation dose from these nuts. So I'm going to separate out the Brazil nuts and have a look at, I'm trying to pick out just the Brazil nuts and then we'll find out the radiation dose just from them and work out the correct account rate, which is an important thing that you need to be able to do. Set this part up again. What we're going to do is see if we can leave that near the Brazil nuts, start the timer for another five minutes and see if they're more radioactive. Let's press start. So we can see here that actually the Brazil nuts are quite dramatically more radioactive than just the normal background count. So if we do a quick percentage um, difference here and say, okay, well, we had 120 um, from our Brazil nuts and we take away the 95, we can get the percentage increase. Divide that by 95 and times by 100 means we've got a 26% increase just from these Brazil nuts. We can actually work out what the count rate is just from the Brazil nuts. So what you'd do is you'd say, okay, well, you've got 120 from the Brazil nuts, but you need to take away 95 because that's the, that's the background count. So the corrected count rate for the Brazil nuts is actually 25 counts in five minutes. So we could divide that by five and we get a count rate of five counts per minute just from the Brazil nuts. Well, that worked better than I perhaps thought it would actually. So I've done that for uh, quite a few years actually measuring the radiation dose. So we've got five counts per minute just from these Brazil nuts. Let's set that amount in context. One of the previous exam questions actually said, should we measure radiation dose instead of in sieverts in bananas? And the idea behind that was that you could gauge the dose and compare it to eating a some, certain number of bananas. So you said, right, well, that was the equivalent of 10 bananas. You'd say, well, that isn't particularly dangerous. So again, here, we do the same thing and say, would it be dangerous to eat these Brazil nuts? Well, they do more good for you than harm. So that means that radiation dose is not going to be too dangerous. This is part of the skill set you need to be good at this GCSE in trying to get a balance between things. With everything, there's going to be a risk and a benefit. For example, when you have an x-ray, you've got to weigh up, the doctor has to weigh up the benefits of you having that so you can fix your leg or your wrist, whatever you've broken, with the slight um, risk of the increased risk of cancer due to having the x-ray. That's what medicine is going to be, always be in a balance of risk versus benefit. The corrected count rate is an important um, thing you need to be able to calculate. So the corrected count rate is the count rate you get from the isotope take away the background count. What I mean by that is, when we're looking at these Brazil nuts, if they give me a count of 120, you think, well, that's really, really radioactive. Actually, if we take off the 95 from the background already, we've only then 
got a 25 over five minutes from here. So that's only five per minute actually coming from the Brazil nuts. It's almost like a zero error taking off the background count for any other reading you take um, from a radioactive source. Now that we've got the key definitions done, it'd be good for you to experiment with what kinds of activities increase your radiation risk. In the workbook, I've got a list of different types of um, experience, say having CT scans, X-rays, um, flights to different places, and what that radiation dose is in millisieverts. So what I want you to do in the workbook is go through and calculate the first up, how much um, exposure you get from taking flights between two different places. So if you pick two destinations, work out how long you've been in the air for, you can use the calculator to work out what your dose would be. The second activity I want to have a go at is determining what your actual background radiation count is. The, so depending on the activities you do, where you live, and how many x-rays, that kind of thing you've had, every person will have a slightly different background radiation dose. So I want you to go through the steps on the workbook and work out what your individual dose is. The next thing you need to do is really summarize your findings from carrying out those last two activities. So you've looked at the different kinds of experiences and the dose you get from that. What you need to do is summarize the factors that are gonna affect an individual's radiation dose. Okay, the amount of radiation they're exposed to, depending on where they live, activities they do, and so on. The final activity is one in which I want you to review an article from a respected publisher and have a look at what the radiation dose is for that person and how dangerous an actual um, radiation dose is. Should we be worried um, by a particular radiation dose? When you've had a go at that, you know everything there is to know about background radiation. So we know what it is, we know the count rate, we know how to calculate corrected count rate, we know the sources of background radiation, artificial and man-made, and we also know about how the different activities and stuff play into each individual having a slightly different background radiation count. I'll see you in the next video.